Well, we're excited uh, to have you in the webinar room this morning. We, it's a lot of fun for me. We don't normally get to do webinars at, at this time of the day, kind of in the morning time here in the United States. Um, we are truly a very global company. Um, Metastock is used all over the world. Uh, in fact, there's pretty much, you can go anywhere in the world and uh, anyone who knows about technical analysis, they are very familiar with Metastock. They, um, as far as worldwide presence goes, nobody has more copies of software out there and established than we do. And it's great. It's lots of fun for us here in the States because we have uh, some fantastic uh, presenters and really gurus in the markets, technical analysis specialists who are uh, good friends of ours and have been using Metastock for many years. And today we, uh, we're really excited to have Kiprianos Kiprianu in the room with us uh, to give a presentation from Cyprus, which I, I think it's about 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening there. So thank you to all of you coming from around the world. Let me give you a brief introduction today uh, to Kiprianos. Uh, he is a certified technical analyst by the British Society of Technical Analysts, member of the International Federation of Technical Analysts. He's a certified stockbroker by the Athens Exchange and a fund manager for the Cy uh, Cyprus Exchange. From uh, 1990 to 96, he was a manager and instructor for Intertrust in Athens, uh, a mutual fund company. He established his own company, Smartline Global, and was representative for uh, various mutual funds. And from 1996 until today, he's been the executive director of Smartline. And he studied technical analysis really very thoroughly through his life and uh, uses it every day in his own transactions. Um, he deals with all types of instruments from around the world. And uh, he carries out seminars on portfolio management and technical analysis and consults quite a bit. He's really a very accomplished technical analyst and we're very excited to have him with you today and I'll turn the time right over to you Kiprianos take it away okay so today uh, we'll discuss the smart entry points uh, with the correct money management and rephrasing this uh, I'm gonna talk about the correct trade in the correct time frame so taking the correct trade we mean that we decide to uh, uh, take a position with the correct money management, of course, but the important thing here is the correct time frame. So I know a lot of traders that they decide today to catch a good trade, but fast one, uh, to catch a couple of thousands or tens of thousands, and then close the position, and then they are catching themselves holding a position for three days or maybe for a month and maybe for a year. Of course, if it's a winning position, that's good. But if it's a losing position and you keep it even for a day and from the day one and the, the time that you decided to take the position was just a fast trade for a couple of thousand and you keep it even for a day, that's exactly the wrong way to take a position. So that's why the first thing that I, I want to talk about is the correct time frame and when exactly I should take a position. And then I will talk about the position size. And this for me is a smart entry point. I will tell you exactly how to take a position and how much so, uh, and I recommend you to use it even if we are talking about the disclaimer that uh, uh, says it's not a recommendation. So I want you to use your market, the market that you know, and then you apply exactly what I'm saying, but trade first with uh, fake money, with a demo account. Please try it, because I'm not going to convince you that these ideas that I'm going to tell you are correct. I'm going to try to tell you, just try it, but try it with fake money at the beginning. All right? If you like it and if you have good results, then you can continue uh, with, uh, let's say, some uh, money and then to go for normal positions. So that's why I'm going to talk about taking the correct trades in the correct time frame in order to have a smart entry point. Entry point means when I buy and when I sell. 
So, and then the correct money management incorporates actually the correct trade. So, let's continue. So, the first thing that I want to tell you, uh, actually I recommend you to go and check uh, for uh, our previous webinars that we had with uh, Equis and uh, it's good if you go through them uh, right after this seminar and you're gonna have a better reality because few things that I'm gonna say now are explained on those uh, webinars, but I'm not gonna cover them now. So, the first thing that we have to define is the trend. So, as we can see here, so on the CD group, we have a movement down. So now, if it is a downtrend or not, this is well defined by Charles Dow, telling us that a trend is a series of tops and bottoms in the same direction, and we need at least two tops and two bottoms in order to start a trend. So this is an uptrend, of course, so, but we have also downtrends and we have no trends. So what I want to say today is for following a trend. So and the smarter thing to do is that if you miss this uptrend, it's better to wait for the downtrend to be established and then you trade on the downside. So when there is no trend, it's better to change an instrument and let's suppose that you are on the currencies and you are checking the euro and the euro doesn't have a trend for your time frame. So for this example that I told you from the beginning, if you want to catch a fast trade, uh, most probably you have to go to the hourly chart. I will explain this in a minute. So, and if you see that there is no trend, then it is better to go to the dollar yen or to go to the Australian dollar in case the dollar or even the euro yen or whatever, but don't trade the, the market that doesn't have a trend. So that's, uh, that's why whatever I'm gonna say has to have a trend first and then I will show you now how the trend changes direction, right? So going back to the example that I showed you before, so most probably, an uptrend just ended up to there, and then we have this top that is lower than the all-time high, and this is the beginning of changing the direction of the trend, most probably. Of course, it's nothing is 100%, as you know, So, but failing to go higher than the previous top, creating this called uh, double top, so and then breaking below this bottom, so then we start this that is called failure swing. Failure swing means failing to go higher than the last top of this movement and then breaking down. So this is actually the double top. I call it in my system failure to go higher. And I call it failure swing because it's swinging in the, the different direction, in the opposite direction, to create this downtrend. Okay? As we said, we need to have two tops and two bottoms. So this is the all-time high. And we have first top, first bottom. Here we have a kind of a top. Or even if you go up to here, you see that they have a many tops and bottoms going lower. So now, I have to define the correction first. So, and then I will show you more examples about judging if you have a trend or not. And then I will go to the correct time frame. So, let's suppose that we have a movement up and then the first candlestick. So, I think you know that the black candlestick means that the open is here and the close is here. If not, please go to the previous webinars and uh, check it again and then go back and check this webinar again. So, see this uh, webinar again. So, black candlestick means that we have a lot of sellers pushing the prices up to here. So the reason that we can focus the next black candlestick is that because we have enough sellers or enough losers, actually, those that they were buying, let's say, from here up to here on this white candlestick, so now they have losses. And now they stop, their stop losses or even their bad psychology of losing money will lead us to this black candlestick too. So that's why if we have a full picture here, moving up, this one is creating this one, and the losers of those two candlesticks will create the third one. That's how I define a correction. A correction must be enough 
to create a big enough to create enough losers okay so and as you can see here from this point up to this point so we have a correction and then we moved higher and we have another correction with enough losers in order to push the prices lower right but still this look like that is going up right so that's why we define a trend this movement that starts from here let's say up to this top having a good correction higher correction and then it's going higher that means those corrections are nothing for this uptrend it's just a correction right so now again we have uptrends when we have two tops and two bottoms successively higher and we have downtrend we have two tops and two bottoms successively lower so this is not a trend it's a range or whatever you name it but definitely is not a trend so an uptrend needs successively uh, higher peaks and drops and we need at least two in the same direction to define a trend so that's why here as you can see we have this kind of corrections and then we have a downtrend somewhere here so and a very good example is in this chart that we have one top second top one bottom second bottom and then this one it's the uptrend so now what is a failure swing so on this uptrend that we have successively higher highs and lows so the last top the F top that cannot go higher so that's why we call it failure to go higher swinging down as soon as it's breaking this bottom so and this is a downtrend because we have two tops and two bottoms going lower and then at the end this bottom is not lower than the all-time low so that's why we call it failure swing and it's going higher swinging up breaking this top for first time during this movement and we call it failure swing that is reversing this downtrend to uptrend so and it's exactly this smart entry point that I was talking from the beginning all right so uh, failure swing we, we consider that here we had an uptrend that's the all-time high correction but this high now is lower than the all-time high so this black candlestick is giving, is giving us exactly the entry point. Actually, we short the market with, with this black candlestick, right? So in the opposite side, we have a downtrend finishing up to here on the all-time low, and here we have the failure swing. Completion of the failure swing means that we start buying here, then it's correcting for a while, and you add on if you want, and the market is going up. So again, a failure swing like this one is this drawing, so that means all-time low, failing to go lower, and then the candlestick that you have to buy is here. So in order to have a good entry and more safe entry, it's better to wait for the second white. But this one, you can go, go again and follow one of my webinars that is giving the exact, exact entry point with a lot of examples just to see uh, uh, where exactly you have to uh, go long, right? As I told you, just try it with the first white candlestick and then in order to fine-tuning your entry just wait for a second one it's much better and safer but I will combine this this sentence that I just said the exact entry point, entry point with the correct money management the smart uh, money management okay so now again we are talking about shorting we short somewhere here if you're waiting for the second black as you can see here it's gonna go a little bit up if you are not lucky, maybe you are going to hit a stop loss around here. But let's suppose that you are continuing this, and then the market goes down, reversing up, down, and from 45, uh, it's going to 15, right? So, um, also, for this movement, let's suppose that we were going down. Here we fail to go lower. That means we buy this and or this one white candlestick, and we keep it whatever is needed okay? until the market is going to reverse actually so uh, drawing again the failure swing is like this one failing to go higher and breaking this bottom with one or two black candlestick depending uh, the uh, actually depending on the money management okay so now the important thing now is to see this movement in the correct time frame so 
If you go back to the history of technical analysis, a lot of uh, traders, a lot of people that are talking about technical analysis define the correct time frame, right? So if we're talking about the daily, let's say, time frame, we use a daily candlestick and we go back only for weeks. So allow me to give you an example. So right now, so let's suppose that I have the meta stock. So you can go here and you can open whatever you want. You know the procedures, but I have already some charts that we can open uh, fast. All right. So let's suppose we have this one. So those are bars, if you know what I, exactly what I mean. Here is the open and here is the close. It's a moving market. So in here I have the candlesticks, right? So now, if you want to change the periodicity of this chart, you just click on this I here. If I change it to daily, it's going to be D, right? So and now, if you check the market, right, which is the euro any, by the way, uh, so then we are talking about, I want to trade for a couple of weeks, right? So means you do, that you go on the daily, and you check if there is a trend for four weeks. So that's why your entry point must be a failure swing on this chart if there is one. If not, then don't trade for a couple of weeks. Right? So what do I mean exactly here? I will show you again the previous slide. And we say that for daily purposes, uh, for daily, a daily chart, let's say, we are using the daily candlesticks and we go back and we check the last four weeks in order to trade for the next couple of weeks. So why? Because if there is a trend, I will show you examples with trends definitely. So if there is a trend in the chart, so if, and if I buy or sell a failure swing here, it's going to last for a couple of weeks or maybe two, three weeks. But as I said from the, the example at the beginning, if I want to catch a trade for today, then definitely you have to go for the intraday, hourly candlesticks, that means one candlestick is one hour. So it's using the open, the open, let's say on this one that is closed because this one is still moving. So this is the open, this is the close, the highest and the lowest of the hour. So in this case, I go back only three days. Look at this. You just click on the plus and minus, and you go back and you check one, two, three. That means starting from here, I have a downtrend. So, and here, if we consider that this one was just a, a little bit lower than this top, maybe we can name it double bottom, and we can go along here. Right? So if you check a market that doesn't have any trend, please don't trade it. So go and change the instrument to something else. You can go to the whatever, sterling or whatever. Okay? So that's why now again I'm telling you the importance of the time frame is so so crucial if you want to take the correct trade in the correct time frame. So now, if you want to keep, let's say, a trade for a couple of months, then you have to use the weekly chart, right? So, and then you go back and you check the previous six months if there is a trend, and then you keep a position on a failure swing on the weekly for a couple of months, two, three months, right? So let's see the example again. So if I want, uh, let's change the instrument. So let's go now and check, let's say, currencies, and let's go for those instruments here. So, uh, all right, so let's see, this is the euro, right? And if you check it here, you see, it's D, right? So let's make it weekly. So on the weekly, I have to go back and I have to check only six months. If there is a trend, then you trade this one for a couple of months, right? So let's fix it. Let's fix the time frame. Means that if we have, let's say, September, so we go 
but one, two, three, four, five, six months from here. You see, it? those are the months. Now, if I use the plus, I zoom it in, and then I see only this part from my line. So it means that we have a top and bottom at the same level. So then we had a higher top, but this one, it's a little bit lower than this one. So, and then a little bit higher. So it looks like that this break is going to lead us for a couple of months with stronger euro. Again, I'm telling you, this is not a recommendation, but I want you to follow it as a failure swing, right? So, or uptrend. So, again, if I want to check the hourly, then I check the previous three days. You see, one, two, three. So, and then one, two, three from here. You fix your time frame is that you don't see more than this. Because if you make the mistake and you check the hourly like this one, right? So then if I ask somebody what kind of trend do we have, they're going to tell me uptrend. And look at what's happening. It's actually a downtrend. And now it's changing direction. So that's why using the correct time frame is so, so crucial to take the right trade and the smart entry point. If you don't know how big is the street or the road that you are uh, driving on, how do you know how much time you're going to take? Right? It's going to take for you to run it. So that's why when we are talking about this example, it's a really very good example from this uptrend that was an uptrend, yeah, but now it's a downtrend. Why? Because I'm using the wrong time frame, I'm going to have wrong entry point. So this is how I'm using my system and how we take our trades. And we trade every day. We have a fund that we trade currencies and commodities intraday uh, or for, for days, for weeks, or for months. Okay, we trade all the time frames, right? So now, preferable, you use this technology that I'm going to tell you, the idea if you want, on the instrument that you like, on the time frame that you like, because you can apply it in any time frame, right? Again, for a couple of hours straight, for today, let's say, is good if you use this failure swing in order to go long on the euro for today and you close your position today, right? So if you want to take a position for a couple of weeks, then you use the daily, you go back and you check for the last four weeks, current week actually, plus one, two, three from here, and you can see, obviously, from here, that there is no trend. So that's why you don't even think to take a position on the euro without any trend, okay? Checking this movement, upward movement, and take a position today for a couple of days, couple of weeks, or whatever. Don't do it. Just take it on the hourly better. So, but on the weekly candlesticks chart, then we go back for six months, right? So when do we take it from here, you see? Uh, let's delete this line then. So when do we take it from here, which is, look like the, a trend. It's not a beautiful uptrend because of this bottom here. So that's why I will tell you about the correct money management, what you should do in this case. All right? So, and then, if you decide, if you're going to trade this one, because it's a weekly, I check, months before, six months before, in order to forecast the next couple of months, you can keep a position uh, for a couple of months. Now, if you want to take a trade on the hourly and keep it for the monthly, make sure that this trade is profitable and not a losing one. Because the time that you start on the hourly, because you want to catch a fast trade, the stop loss is also um, a stop loss for the hourly chart, not for the daily. So and we have the tendency, of course, to take a wrong position on the wrong time frame, keeping a wrong position for wrong, for wrong duration. So that's why make the things look like the same. If I decide that this trade is from the beginning, fast trade means should be on the hourly, 
should be a failure swing on the hourly, should be a trend on the hourly, and should be a stop loss on the hourly, and the profit taking on the hourly. I will cover the profit taking and the stop losses later on, which is the, my third part, okay? The position size, okay? So this is what I have to uh, say. Uh, actually, I covered this uh, in previous um, webinars. So let's see this one, uh, okay, let's see one that has a trend or something. Okay, so this is the sterling. Let's go for the sterling. I have examples on the commodities also. If we have the time, I will go through them thoroughly. And then, then uh, let's say for the hourly. So here is a question. How long I go back? Right, I go back one, two. That means today's day. One, two, three. So if I check it from here, uh, was a failure swing for down up to here? There was a failure swing for up, which doesn't mean that we have no trend to reverse. So I recommend you not to take any position on the hourly chart of the sterling. Let's see the daily. Oh, sorry. Daily. So let's see the daily. Again, don't check all this stuff, or maybe all this stuff, because you are totally confused. Why? Because you don't use the correct time. The correct time from this, if, it's, if every, every candlestick is one day, then I have to go this week plus three from here. Right? If you want to put a line, so and then you go back and you fix, you zoom it in, and you check if there is a trend. There is no trend. I recommend you not to touch the sterling even for the next couple of weeks, for the next couple of weeks. But if I check the weekly, so then I have to go back for six months, so, and I can check it from, uh, you, you see again, current month, one, two, three, four, five, six, from here. So, here we had a failure swing, then came back. Here, of course, you should hit a stop loss or something. But this is changing the whole picture. So, that's why I recommend you, if you can, and you shouldn't trade any way the sterling for this time P. So for this, uh, let's say, last uh, six months, don't touch it, okay? So sometimes it's good if you go for the hourly for a couple of trades, but definitely it's not the right instrument according to my system because I'm following a trend and I'm looking for the reversal of a trend, all right? So let's go for another one. So let's check. Uh, this is the Euro Yen, and here we have the Euro GBP. Let's say for the Euro Yen. So again, for the hourly, I check the current day plus two, that means total three days, maximum, right? So that means we are here, one, two, three. That means I will check the market from here. I don't mind what's happening. I don't care what's happening before. So if you have, let's say, this kind of movement, so that was a good correction up, then lower, and now we fail to go lower. I don't like it that much because I don't have two tops and two bottoms and look for a failure swing to go long, right? So let's go for the daily. So for the daily, I go back current month, the week, so plus one, two, three, four, from here, right? So, and then I put exactly the chart to start from the beginning. Uh, I'm gonna use a bottom to start, this one. So that was a correction, that was okay. That was an uptrend. So if it's gonna break this top, I buy more because normally I should buy this one somewhere. So, but if it's going to be a failure swing, I short it from here. So, and then if I check four weeks, the duration of this trade should be a couple of weeks, right? Let's say half of the period that I'm using to check if there is a trend, okay? So, I think we have a lot, uh, enough examples. If you want, you can go again and uh, check again this webinar or go through uh, the previous ones. Uh, this one is going to be uh, on the uh, Equis channel, and you can go and check it again for a couple of times if you want. So that's why you say, uh, forget the monthly, it's for long-term long, long -term invest, investments for the banks, okay, let's say, or we say for the central banks. So for the weekly, we mean we use weekly candlesticks, and to check the trend, we go back for six months. That's why we can keep a position for half of this period, for three months. Why? Because if there is a failure swing, it's going to be a trend 
for the next two, three months. Right? So if we check the daily, use a daily candlestick and go back for four weeks, current plus three weeks actually. So and then you keep a position half of this period, that means for a couple of weeks. So now for the intraday four currencies, I have also some other uh, details here, but let's go for the currencies. Or generally, for markets that they are working for 24 hours, let's say you can go, let's say, for uh, intraday for Dow, for uh, Nasdaq or whatever, so which is hourly candles and go back for three days. Right? For international stocks, that we have futures for 24 hours, so then we go for the hourly candles, but we use five days because the stocks are a little bit slower than the currencies, right? Because currencies, as we know, is 24 hours trading uh, forever. Okay. All right. So now, okay. So if we are talking about the currencies for intraday trading for today or maximum one and a half day, that means I start it today. Tomorrow I have to close it, right? So and I'm telling you, you close it tomorrow if it's a profitable trade. You don't close it tomorrow because you have a big loss and you don't want to take it, right? That's a positive way of thinking, right? And this is exactly what I'm teaching, and this is exactly what I'm doing uh, with my traders in our dealing group, right? So, now, I think we finish now the trend, two tops and two bottoms. Failure swing is the reversal of a trend, that we follow it, uh, and then the time frame means that I see this picture only. What picture? For the weekly, maximum six months back, back, and you check if there is a trend. If there is not, don't trade. So for the daily uh, 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 candlesticks chart, we use four weeks and we trade for a couple of weeks. So and for intraday purposes, we use the hourly and we go for three days uh, back and we trade maximum for one and a half days. I recommend you close it today. Right? So sometimes you have a trend on the hourly, but you don't have a trend on the daily. That means take your position, close it, and reopen it after a couple of days. Right? So this is exactly what, the, what do I mean about the theory. Now, we confirm also the end of a trend using some oscillators. I'm teaching as a basic oscillator the rate of change, which is actually an oscillator, that means a line that is going above and below the zero. So uh, that is the close today minus the close a uh, few days ago, six days, seven days, 12 days, 24 days, okay? Follow again my previous webinars. So, as I said, the, the purpose of this seminar is a smart entry point, which is a smart entry point is a failure swing in the correct time frame. And the correct money management now is coming with these two Excel files that we can send it to you and play with it in order to decide about your uh, correct position size because that's the important thing how much I'm gonna take now in order to be smart and stay in the market for a long time right so the one is uh, for those people that they are working for a bank and they have a budget or whatever a, a credit line 1 million 10 million or whatever the millions so in the other example that they have is that for somebody that has only ten thousand dollars and he wants to make money trading the markets. Mainly, when you have this amount of money, you trade, let's say, international stocks or currencies, right? So that's why I'm gonna cover both of them, right? So the one is for these guys that they are, they have the money. They have the, let's say, the budget, okay? So that's why I'm gonna start with this. And I'm gonna tell you my approach about somebody that they that uh, received let's say one million credit line or ten it doesn't matter I'm gonna use the million for and you and you take this Excel file and you play with it so and they gave him a loss of two hundred thousand but not more that means the time that you hit the stop loss two hundred thousand you stop trading so imagine that if it's ten million this one is becoming let's say uh, two million all right. So that's why it doesn't matter if it's 10, 1, or whatever. So you put the numbers that you want, and then you, you follow uh, the calculations that I'm, I, 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 I'm going to make here. So that's why now. First of all, nobody is perfect. Second, 
No system is 100%. So that's why take the decision from the beginning, decide it, and follow this way of thinking. So I'm going to have stop losses, right? Second decision. I don't want to lose the 200,000 in one day, right? Or one shot. So then, how long do you think you have to stay in the market in order to make money? So let's say, uh, can I lose the 200,000 in one month, trading here and there, being confused with the time frames, taking a long-term position on the hourly, which is wrong again? So, or maybe you can start a, a long-term position on the hourly, keeping, the, keeping this trade a losing trade forever, which is wrong. So that's why you have to make the things being understandable and being sane. So for me, if we have a trader that just started, let's say, in the bank, or has a budget for the beginning of the year and is one million, or at credit line, so I think this guy has to stay in the market for five months, at least, right? So that means if you start trading and you are doing, let's say, and you, you actually trade and you are hitting only stop losses, something is wrong with your decisions. Something is wrong with your system. So you have to learn. So that's why I believe that if you keep yourself in the market for a couple of weeks, so losing weeks, then you have to decide that you have to stop trading. Right? So, and if you continue, in five months, you're going to lose the 200,000. So that's why I consider this $40,000 or whatever, the uh, euros, whatever, right? So being your monthly stop loss, even though the bank doesn't tell you anything, so you have to understand that $40,000 is a stop loss for a month in order to stay for five months in the market being able to trade, right? So that's why five months with $40,000. Is making the 200,000 in the fifth month, they, you will receive an email that says stop trading. Right? So, now, if you have, let's say, 40,000 to spend or to lose in one month, right? So then I recommend you that the second week, the second consecutive losing week, you have to stop trading for the month. Right? I know that's a little bit complicated, but if you go through it, and you put the numbers here, then you will realize the exact amount of your position size, right? Because if you are giving you one million credit line, you, have to, you cannot overcome it, right? But if you put 10 million there, or if they tell you that uh, you have unlimited credit, doesn't mean that you have to start killing your account, right? So look at this again. So if you stop yourself of losing 40,000 per month, I recommend you to cut it and split it more into maximum two weeks in a month. So by this way, so the 40,000 means that you can lose 20,000 per week for two consecutive weeks. And then, in order to stop you for doing crazy things, I'm telling you that if you want to trade on a daily basis, uh, time frame, I mean, on, on every day. So then limit this $20,000 per week into two days losing days, consecutive losing days. So with this assumption, so I'm telling you that start trading today, Monday, let's say. Uh, so you start next Monday. Two losing trades stop totally trading for a week. So let's suppose that you start the next week and you have two losing weeks in a row, having no profits, let's suppose, right? That you have no profits. So then stop yourself for the whole month. And then if it's happening for second month, I recommend you to go for training. Something is wrong with you, right? So you cannot have always consecutive losing trades, right? But at least you are going to lose two months, probably by, by 40,000, you lost 80,000, and you have another 120, uh, before they stop you. So this is my approach for uh, somebody that has the credit line. So, and then, so you have to start trading, but you have the control. You have to have the control, actually. If you have two losing days, so then you have to 
stop and wait, take some time to check the market, to relax, and then start the next Monday. If the next week is also a losing week with two days losing consecutive, two, uh, consecutive days, so then stop for the month. If it's happening for second month, I recommend you to check something. Something is wrong. Right? So now, for my system, so if we're talking about out the currencies, we put 35 pips as a stop loss. Right? Sorry for talking about the currencies, but I think it's a little bit easier uh, for uh, to check it. Okay, so I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna go now for this bottom, which is the most important thing here. So if you put the numbers here, and if you want to change them, so anyway, for me and for my system and for my traders, 35 pips which means it's one-third of a cent, so is my stop loss, always, right? Let's make them a little bit bolder, those, okay? So 35 pips stop loss means that you enter the position on the hourly and you start with 35 pips, right? So now, the position size, if you change the numbers here, you will see that is going to be 1.5 million maximum. Maximum. Doesn't mean that you are going to trade 1.5, right? Because let's suppose that your position size, one, I mean, the credit line is only 1 million. So that's why keep this in mind that my position size must be maximum 1.5, whatever is happening. Right? So if you change those numbers here, the 1 million, you put it like this, and so I mean, you, you change it to 5 million. 6 million. So all the numbers will change accordingly. So and then the position size, if you keep the 35 pips as a stop loss, okay, so the maximum should be 7 million that you have to go. Again, I'm telling you, this is not actually the amount that you're going to start trading. All right. So if you have, let's say, 1 million or 5 million uh, on your account and it's your money, so you think that you have the right to go, let's say, up to 50 times the 5 million, and you go, go for 250 million. So that's why I'm limiting the position size up to seven, around 7 million, right? So if you want to be sane, right? So that's why everything is changing. If you change one of those yellow numbers, and also you can increase if you want uh, it to, uh, up to 60 pips your stop loss, and then you decrease the position size. So that's why if you want to have this, um, uh, this Excel file, so go on our site. Uh, www.smartlineglobal.com communicate uh, with us and we'll send you this Excel file to play a little bit with it. If you need more information, you can send us an email uh, to the info uh, or uh, support and then we'll come back to you. Right? So now, this is a little bit more complicated than the other one, which is the most normal uh, thing that's happening as I can see. So that I don't have the one million. I have only $10,000 in my account. Right? And of course, if you want to trade the currencies or even the stocks, they can give you a margin, means 50 times this amount of money, 100 times this amount of money. Right? So they tell you that you can have, let's say, 10% margin in your account and you can trade up to 100%, right? So up to 10 times, 50 times, 100 times, right? So now, must be a logic in this, in this money management thing, right? Again, I'm telling you, I keep the previous number that was 1 million credit line, and I had position size 1.5 million, right? The first example that I gave you. So in this case, again, I recommend you, if you have $10,000, never go more than 50 times your money. That means uh, you can trade an amount of 500,000, right? So what's going to happen if you take a position half a million, if you have 10,000, right? So your stop loss that they gain must be standard for me and my system. Again, I'm, I'm telling you, doesn't mean that I'm correct, right, if I say all this stuff. So just try it, right? And you will find out um, uh, if it's correct or wrong. And also, you can uh, modify it, right? And you can play with it. Again, it's an Excel file. Again, let's say real amount $10,000. Maximum 50 times your money, stop loss 35 pips, and always if you want to, let's say, to be sane, 
if you are making in the hour on the hourly because those are numbers on the hourly i will tell you later on for the daily and weekly so uh, potential profit three times the 35 which is approximately 100 pips which is one cent that means the time that you are making the one cent uh, i recommend you to start thinking that is good if you take the profits right so that means you risk 35 pips in order to make to make 100 pips right so what i have now to say is that if you put those numbers here and you decide about them i will never go more than 50 times i will put always 35 pips as a stop loss and my target for the day is to make 100 pips so then it's good if you cut a position 50 percent of your position that means you are making 100 pips it's smart if you close it and let's see what's going to happen tomorrow right so look at what's happening now with the numbers so if you keep those numbers then 50 times margin means 50 times your money, the 10,000 makes 500,000. So every trade that you're going to take is 500, right? So, and then put 35 pips means that if you hit a stop loss, 35 pips on the 500,000, it's going to be 1,750. So then you check this number, how much is it into your real money? So if you are losing 1,800, let's say, and you have only $10,000 real amount, it's like that you have 18% loss from one trade. But if you make a profit, 100 pips, let's say you make 100, but even you can close it at 85 pips, right, whatever. So be smart on this. So then your profit is 5,000, comparing again this 5,000 with the $10,000 that you have in your account real money, Actually, from one trade, you made 50%. And this is the trick here that we have, and we try to convince the people to trade more money and more money having no money, right? So that's why, be careful. You have to be sane in order not to lose the control, right? You have only $10,000. You raise 20% of your money from one shot for one trade in order to make 50% which makes sense for me. You risk one third to make, let's say, uh, let's say you, you risk three to make 10, which is normally. And if you go uh, to our, let's say, books in technical analysis, you will see that the one out of three, it says smart and correct money management, okay? So look at this now. So now, let's suppose that you are, you take 10 trades, seven trades are wrong, uh, sorry, uh, are correct, profitable, and three trades are wrong. If you have 70% accuracy, that means from the 10 trades, you have seven wrong and uh, seven correct and three wrong, it's, a, it's an okay uh, trading uh, decision, right? So actually, you, you are using the right entry point with the right um, uh, money management, right? So imagine now, if you have, let's say, five trades of the 10 are okay, and five are wrong. So you see, the maximum loss is going to be 8,000. If you multiply five times this amount of money, it's 8,700. But if you have five trades with 25 profit, actually, you are still profitable. So now, if you have, let's say, three trades correct and seven trades wrong, so now you are still having 2,750, so which means that you are still in the market. All right? So now, if you have, let's say, one trade correct, and nine trains wrong. So now you have a problem. You are losing, you lost all of your money, right? So that's why what I mean, the, the important thing is to try to have at least 60% correct trades comparing with 40. So and now, if you write this accuracy of your system and decisions, you can play here with how much margin you can take or how much stop loss you have to put. Let's say you want to put 50, 50 pips stop loss. So still, you are in the money. I mean, actually, you are making money, right? You can say, okay, I can increase my position size. Instead of 500, I can go, let's say, 100 times my money, right? So immediately, here you can see what may happen. And you write down a strategy, right? If I go with 100 times margin, that means I go with $10,000, I go for a million trade, that means you press the entry and you, and you risk $1 million, or 10 lots or whatever is the name of the, uh, whatever is the market that you trade. And if you're going to lose 50 pips, it's going to be five, 50, 
$5,000, which is 50% of your money, which is too risky. Of course, if you are making money, you are making 10,000, 100 pips multiplied by 1 million is 10,000, which is actually you are doubling your money with one trade. All right? So now, my recommendation again, tell me that I'm correct. All right? So I, I, I believe that if you are using the correct failure swings that I showed you before in the correct time frame, you are going to have this six times correct and four times wrong into the 10th time straight. But keep this one 50 times and keep this one 35 pips and trust me, you will trade forever. All right? So you are going to have a lot of mass trading, but be, uh, let's say, strict with, you, with yourself. No more than 500,000. All right? Or if you want 60 times to be a round number, you will see later what does mean round number for me. All right? 600,000 having only 10,000 in your account, so you will stay in the market for a long time. All right? Again, 10,000 real money, 60 times your position size is your position size, that is 600,000 maximum. So, and then 35 pips your stop loss. And if you're making 100 pips, take them. All right? So, this is now what I'm talking about. So, ask us for this, uh, let's say, uh, Excel sheet or created by yourself is not a smart thing or a complicated thing. So, and then, let's go back to a market that has, that has a trend. And remember, for those that they have 1 million in their account, I recommend them to take a position maximum 1.5 million. And for those that they have $10,000 in their account, I recommend them to keep this number small, 600,000 maximum with 35 pips and take the profit if you are making 100 pips. So you will trade for a long time, right? So then let's go for the market. Let's suppose that we have the Euro Yen, the Euro against the Yen, that has a failure swing here. So failure swing doesn't mean that it's going to go up forever, or means that when there is a failure swing, must the market go up, it has to go up. So what do I mean? Here there is a, pot a potential to lose because maybe the market is going to come down and it's going to hit your stop loss. 35 pips, if you're buying here or here, 35 pips, means that 130, 250 minus 35 pips is going to be whatever somewhere here, you're going to hit a stop loss. So means that at the failure swing, doesn't mean that the market is going to fly. means that has a potential to go up or down, whatever the direction of the market. So I mean that now you have to use the correct money management. Remember, for those that they have 1 million, I told, I told you that you make the calculations and you can go for 1.5. In this case, on the first failure swing that we suppose that the market's going to go up, you trade one-third of the 1.5 million, which is your position size. What I'm doing here now, I'm trying to give you a smart entry point, which is the failure swing, with a smart position uh, uh, money management, which means that maximum to this beginning of the uptrend, because it's still the beginning, we don't know if it will be an uptrend. So just start with one-third of the 1.5 million. Or, for the example that I gave with the $10,000, I said maximum, you have to go maximum 600,000. So, at the failure swing, start with 200,000 because your position size is 600. So, if it's going to go higher, add another one-third. If it's going to break up again because now it's an uptrend, buy another one-third. So that's why we build a position. We don't go with the maximum matching with uh, a belief that the market is going to respect our money or respect us and uh, then it's going to go up because I want it. Right? No, the markets are there and we can hit a stop loss. Nothing is 100%. Right? So that's why you have to start with this failure swing here one third of the position size. If you are on the million thing, so go for, for one third of the 1.5 million, right? Again, I can, can give you again the position size. This is 1.5 million, I mean. With this, ah, sorry, I have to make the one million here. So, and here says no more than uh, something is wrong here. I changed something, maybe the pips uh, of the stop loss, yes. So let's make it 35 pips. All right. So now 1.5, I start this failure swing, this one, 
because my time frame is four weeks, as I told you before. So you start for this one, one third of your money of your position size, which means five hundred thousand. Or if you are on the other calculation scenario, so if six hundred is your position size and you decided that it's going to be always six hundred, start with two hundred. Why? Because if you are going to hit a stop loss here, it's not going to be a full stop loss of the six hundred thousand, right? It's going to be one third of the stop loss that you are uh, expect or you can afford, right? So, and then, if it's breaking up, buy another third. And now, if it's going to break more, I buy another third. As I, as I told you, you can keep this position, the beginning position, for a couple of weeks. Why? Because, again, I go back to the time frames thing, and I said, for the hourly candlestick chart, I use, sorry, this is a, this is a daily. For the daily, I go back four weeks, in order to keep a position for a couple of weeks. Now, if the market is flying and is giving you profit, I recommend you to cut a little bit of this, right? So, and then uh, it's good if you keep it uh, forever or until it's going to be the failure swing at the top in this case, right? So, now, for the daily purposes, if the failure swings on the daily, and as I said, the calculations that I just had, so let's say for the for this for this one is 35 pips. So it's for the hourly charts. So for the daily, if you're gonna keep a position for a couple of weeks, you make three times this 35 pips. That means if you take a position here because it's a daily and you are gonna keep it more and the mo the movements are bigger as you can see here. So it's good if you put a stop loss for 100 pips, right? So that means for the daily. I triple the numbers for the stop loss, and I keep it a little bit more, right? But for the hourly purposes, if there is a trend, and you have a failure swing, don't risk it more than 35 pips, all right? So let's go again for the euro uh, that we had the trend before. Let's check where is the, let's check it. So euro, all right? No, this is uh, yeah, 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 Euro GDP, Euro. So as you can see here, in this case, if I make it hourly, right? And we said that was a downtrend for three days, and now I have the failure swing. We say buy here one third of the position size, and if you are wrong, you are going to hit a small stop loss. But if it's going to go up correct and goes higher, buy another third, and then buy another third, okay? So this is exactly uh, what, uh, what, I'm, what I'm talking about. When I'm, I'm talking about the smart entry point, I mean the failure swing. The correct money management decides to stay in the market for a long time and then start using smaller amounts in order to, to stay for the market for longer time, all right? So, uh, I'm finishing in five minutes, all right? So just stay with me. I recommend you to start for, with one of the previous seminars that I, uh, that uh, webinars that I gave with uh, with Chris. So and then go again and check this one, and it, it's going to make real sense, all right? So stay in the market for a long time. So you don't have the right to spend your million or somebody sells million, right? You don't have the right to take the $10,000 as a loan or a credit card, uh, let's say, credit, and put it there and try to lose it. No. Your purpose is to make money. You risk the $10,000 in order to make money, right? So stay in the market for a long time in order to try, in order to learn, in order to try some strategies, study at the same time, and then go for a demo account first. That means do all these logical things and stay in the market longer. So that's why what I recommend, find your position size, and when you trade the failure swing, trade only one third of this position size. That means you are going to have less losses, and if it's going to go in your direction, you increase your position up to 1.5 million or up to 600,000, right? Don't try to become a millionaire in one day with $10,000, right? Trust me, you are going to pay a lot of $10,000 in order to make it. So that's why be smart and slow, right? You can make the million. 
or you can make the target that the bank says. So if you consider that you have time, if you have time, let's say one year in order to make your target, so then you have you are patient guy. So if you think that you can make the ten thousand from ten thousand dollars in one million in one shot, yeah, if you if you risk a lot of ten thousand, you can make it because you can take the good trade at the end and you are gonna ride it and that's it. But trust me, this is not happening from everybody. So it's happening sometimes. So that's why it's smarter, safer, you are gonna lose less if you really follow the correct time frame, the failure swing that is reversing a trend on the, in the correct time frame, and when you press the enter, don't put so many lots, so, so much money, so for the beginning of the trade, because sometimes it's wrong, right? So if it's six out of the 10, that's good, but if you are wrong three time, seven times and three times you are, wrong, you are correct, so you are gonna spend the whole amount of money very soon, right? So this is what I have to say. I don't know if you have questions. Um, to be honest, I don't have the time to go through it now. Uh, I don't know, Theo, if, uh, if you can help us here. Well, yeah. Uh, Chris, yes, according. So they will be. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so actually, you know what? You can send us an email, right? So go to our site. So register yourself and send, a, send, uh, send an email and I will answer back to you. We do this every, every night. So don't expect me to tell you, shall I buy now the euro and I will say yes or no, right? So that definitely is not going to happen. So I will, I will answer the equation during the night. That means the market moved already and then I will tell you uh, what should be the correct entry point or even the correct position size. So we can send you the emails uh, with, the, with the, the email with the uh, Excel files if you want to play with it and um, uh, I really have to finish here um, ah, somebody asked for uh, for notes uh, yes we can send you the PDF uh, with this one just register yourself and send us uh, an email uh, you, you you can send us an email at the info at smartlineglobal.com uh, or easier go to our site see I have uh, we have a, a channel that we have a lot of uh, recordings and you can go through them and maybe the answer will be un actually your question will be answered with this um, uh, and definitely we can send you the the slides if you ask us for this all right so gentlemen thank you very much Dave thanks for this uh, opportunity to give me to say these uh, ideas that they have again they, the purpose is not to convince you that is working something here right I'm just give you gave you an idea try it please if it's correct, just continue using it. If it's not, just forget it. It's, you spent one hour for nothing, right? So, guys, thanks a lot. Have a nice morning for you. We have uh, evening here. It's uh, really 7 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and uh, hope that uh, this webinar is going to bring you luck. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Kiprianos. Fantastic presentation. I, I think I speak for everybody uh, when I say that we're taking away something that we can add to our training today. Um, I took a lot of notes myself. Uh, really very good stuff. We really appreciate it. Uh, once again, everybody, if you need to get a follow-up question answered, definitely go and email uh, Kiprianos at info at smartlineglobal.com. You can visit their website at smartlineglobal.com as well. Uh, anyways, have, I'm glad everyone could join us. Uh, watch out for our next webinar coming up. Best of luck to everybody in your trading and have a terrific rest of your evening or day wherever okay. you may be. Thanks so Thanks much, so. everyone. Bye-bye.